I've got with me uh, the president of the Asian Rugby Football Union, Mr. Trevor Gregory, who's here for the uh, Sri Lanka game, of course, and he's just witnessed uh, Sri Lanka in a brave performance against Hong Kong, going down 41 points to 10. And uh, let's just ask him first what he thought about the game. Did you enjoy that one, Trevor? Yes, I did, yeah. And it was a very physical game. I think both sides were up for that uh, in humid conditions. It was quite uh, energy sapping, but I think the, everybody could see the stamina of the players. They played all the way to the end. And in fact, Sri Lanka got their breakthrough right at the end. But I, I was very impressed with, uh, with Sri Lanka's defensive performance too. I think they were, they were really very tight at the back. Uh, and uh, I think you know that bodes well for, for the next games, particularly when you have the Philippines here for the final game in the series. So that will be a big one. Yes, we have been targeting that game, so the Philippines will uh, will be expecting some hot stuff when they come here in uh, two weeks' time. But tell us about this tournament, uh, Trevor. It's gone from strength to strength. You've got good sponsors on board, and now you, the quality of rugby is rising and rising in the top division. Are you happy with the way it's gone? Yeah, I am, and it's amazing where we've come in six years. If you look back just over six years ago, Asia used to have one tournament every couple of years. Last year, we had 34 tournaments. And, and I think the standard in 15s and 7s has gone up dramatically. Uh, obviously, that takes a lot of resources to do that. And we've had a major sponsor which has helped us, together with the IRB, to develop those competitions. You know, AFU itself puts a lot of hard work in, but we need that support. So next year, um, the structure will change, partly because we have to make it more cost effective because last year we had almost all 28 countries in AFU playing. So there's a lot of uh, tournaments, a lot of trips. So we had to make it more uh, cost effective. But there is also a natural break right now because the IRB have created what's called development grant bandings. So you have high performance bandings, performance bandings and development bandings. And three of our Asian countries are in high performance or performance bandings. So there was a natural break at three, but that doesn't mean to say that the teams out of those bandings can't qualify to get in there, but it also sets some targets for, for teams like Sri Lanka who are in D1 right now, Development Group 1, to look at how to get into the performance group. P, first band is P2, where Hong Kong and Korea sit, and Japan are in HP2, which is a high performance. Um, but I think it, it's very clear now. The IRB have come out and made these bandings. It gives everybody a chance to play at their level and with a chance to move up and down. We are the only uh, set of tournaments in the world that have promotion and relegation. If only everybody else would follow Asia. Yes, it, it is. I was just going to ask you, what's the relationship between AFU and the IRB? Is it good? And considering that we've got probably the best player base, the biggest player base here in Asia, which contribute to the IRB, uh, do they take on board your suggestions and uh, you know your complaints, even if it were? Yeah, all of those things, and in varying amounts. Um, we have a fantastic relationship with the IRB, and, and, and frankly, without putting words in their mouths, they call us the model region. All the other regions are looking to do tournaments like we've done here with the A5N and, and next year it'll be called the Asian Rugby Championship. Our Asian 7 Series is very mature. People are following that. The same we're doing for the women. Uh, and, and of course, uh, the IRB have a, have a very, very good support for us. We need their support. We need them to be on board. But at the same time, we have set these challenges for ourselves. We, we've wanted to develop. Um, we are 60% of the world's population with 28 current countries with four more queuing up to join now, which will take us to 32. But more significantly, we are 80% of the world's youth. So all these young players that you see coming through, but uh, sadly, we're still 5.8% of the rugby playing population. So we have a massive growth potential. The IRB wants us to support us to do that, but they have to see us growing. Uh, they can't, they don't have inexhaustible resources and funding because 94% of all the money the IRB get comes from the 15th Men's World Championship, you know, the World Cup. So they have to be careful how they spread that around. But they've been gradually increasing our grants. We do, you know, obviously get sponsorship. And uh, really now it's up to us to show that we deserve more support. 
And when you look at the uh, disparity between the amount of population that we've got and the rugby players, it's, it's all, always down to one thing, physicality, uh, Trevor. The Asian people can't compete on the same level. We've seen Hong Kong and Japan reliant on expatriate players. And uh, what's the stance of the IRB towards expat players now that the Rugby Sevens has gained admission into the Olympics as well? Is the eligibility criteria going to conflict and what's the, uh, what, what are the steps that the IRB is taking? Uh, not, not really a conflict. I mean, all world rugby falls under the IRB criteria and uh, you either have to have been born in a country or have a parent from, from that country or the three-year rule. For the Olympics, it's very clear. You have to have a passport. Uh, well, you know, there's no other criteria. You must carry a passport to the Olympics. So all the qualifiers next year for the Olympics and it looks likely that the Olympic qualifier for Asia will be the Asian Seven Series next year. So all those games will have to be played with people with passports. Now, whether the IRB will consider the inclusion of passports as one of their criteria, which they currently exclude under the IRB criteria, uh, we will follow up on because we've just had a little discussion about it right now. Um, but I think clarity is what's needed. When you go back into something like the Olympics, and don't forget rugby was in it in the 20s, although the 15s code, and it's, it's impractical to ever consider that happening again, that, that you have a new set of rules to deal with. It wasn't many months ago that it was thought that the, the criteria for qualification would be the IRB uh, criteria. But the Olympic movement came out and said, no, if you're going to qualify people, they must come under the Olympic Charter, and that means passports. So I think whilst it may sound a bit confusing, we'll make everything very clear. Uh, we're a year away from that anyway, so by that time, it'll be very important that we've made it clear. But I think what, what is equally important, and, I, and I'll say this um, from my chairman of Hong Kong Rugby Union, Cap2, you know, when um, we had the qualifier in the Hong Kong Sevens, and there's a 16th place in the cup competition. To be able to get Sri Lanka to take that position up and do themselves proud, they got great support, they improved with all their games. That's what we've got to show the IRB. That's where we've got to step up. We're, we're looking to do transcontinental sevens uh, tournaments for our performance teams. So you'd play the top few in Asia against Foru, uh, Brazil, African teams, all of that, to, to raise the standard of our Asian teams in a performance way at sevens. So there's a lot we've got to do. We've got to step up and show that we deserve a place at the highest table. Whoever comes second in this championship will play Uruguay in August. We've got to start getting closer to these teams. We've got to show uh, that we mean business. Now, uh, it's difficult when when we say the word expatriate. You know, nearly all the players from Hong Kong are homegrown. You know, they, they have played their rugby. Several of them are born there. They've grown up through a very mature rugby system. And I think it's more important that the team is organic. We, many years ago, Hong Kong did have an expat team. It was a mercenary team, you know, fly in and out. We don't do that. And I don't encourage anybody to do that. The Philippines have had to do it by necessity, but you'll be playing a team now in two weeks' time that have at least 10 players that have developed through their system. So it takes time. It takes a lot of time. And, uh, you know, but I, I really feel that the Asian countries are making their efforts to do that, uh, and we must continue. And given our performance at the Hong Kong Sevens, uh, Sri Lanka's performance, I mean, uh, Trevor, are we like a model child for you? Well, it certainly, uh, it was certainly helping my cause because, you know, it's very difficult, the wild card uh, positions in these tournaments because there is only one. And when Japan weren't in the World Series, they took their one in, uh, in Japan. So then there's only another one in Asia, in Dubai. And there was always this idea that, you know, countries like Russia would get it. And because we had the qualifier, it meant that we could put our hand up and say, look, Sri Lanka, we're third in Asia at sevens. We can't ignore that. That's a massive thing. And actually, I encourage your president at the beginning of the term, please make sure Sri Lanka don't back off. They must target the top three. 
because then we've got a case to put to the IRB. And without that credibility, we wouldn't have been able to, to actually make that case. So in real terms, absolutely, model child. We uh, had, a, had a, an embryonic birth there and, uh, and it paid off. And the IRB were very impressed. So now we've just got to keep showing that we're going to develop because you know, while we're all developing, every country in the world now who has an IOC are going to be able to tap their IOC resources. And, uh, you know, a lot of teams will start to improve. So we can't take a step back. Well, Trevor, lots of plans in the pipeline for the ARFU. Hopefully Sri Lanka will be a part of those as well. Thanks very much for joining us here on thepapare.com. Thanks a lot. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very Cheers. much, Trevor. Cheers.